Okay, this is part five of the October 2024 Edexcel International A-Level Physics paper for Unit 1. So it's the most recent paper and the mark scheme's recently been released. So I'm going through this. I can see some people have already watched the first four parts, but I'm a little dismayed by some of you. You're watching them, but you're not giving me any positive feedback or incentive to continue to make these videos. I've only had one like so far by anyone watching it. So if you're watching it, you must be finding it useful. And if you're finding it useful, show, it, show an, me an attitude of gratitude and hit that like button because that's how, our, that's how YouTube works. If we don't get the likes, we don't get seen by other students. And um, if you read the blurb underneath my video, I've asked everyone who's watching it to, sh to show a little bit of positivity and to support the channel by liking every single video they watch, yeah, and by sharing it with their friends and making sure they're subscribed. So some of you are watching it, not giving any feedback. So if you don't like it, tell me you don't like it. But if you're watching it and you do like it, you find it useful, you learn anything from it, then give me a thumbs up. That would be great. Thank you very much. Okay, question 16, another uh, 10 marks or so. It's a simple hydrometer. Yeah, it's shown in a diagram. It's a cylinder with a mass at the bottom. Yeah, the cylinder floats vertically in a liquid. That's what a hydrometer is. And it's used to enable us to determine the relative densities of different um, liquids. The diameter of the hydrometer um, is X. So you can work out the area at the top because it's floating, so it's going to be about upthrust. Okay. So the scale on the side shows how deeply it sinks into the liquid. Yeah, so here's the scale on the side. And it's kind of gone to that level. So you can work out how much it goes into the liquid. Depending on the density of the liquid, it will sink uh, a lot or it will sit high. Okay, so that's basically how they work. I had a great set uh, in the school I used to work at before, and it's a great way of learning. Uh, first time I've seen a question on a hydrometer, however. Okay, a student placed a hydrometer in a sample of pure water, and you've got to complete the free body force diagram to show the forces acting on the hydrometer. So if you can't do this, then you won't be able to understand what the question is about. So the question is about that, um, the weight and the upthrust are balancing each other. That's why it's floating. Okay, you get two mark, one mark for labeling the arrows up and down correctly, and one mark for making sure that the up and arrow, up arrow and down arrow are equal uh, in length. Okay, otherwise they won't be balanced, and that's how you get two marks. So, um, first thing you do when you watch my videos, get in the habit pressing that like button, okay? The student placed a hydrometer in a sample of seawater, yeah? So they've gone from um, pure water to seawater. So pure water, you can see it's sinking more. Seawater, which is denser, it sinks in less, but it's not drawn accurately. It's not to scale, but you get the idea. So seawater is more dense than pure water, as I just explained. At equilibrium, that means when the forces are balanced, the vertical position of the hydrometer was higher in the seawater uh, than in the pure water as shown. So, explain why the vertical position of the hydrometer was higher in the seawater. Well, you've got to now explain it, yeah, rather than do it anything mathematical. So, explain why. That's what they want you to do. So, it's about depth, detail, and clarity. To float, or to be at equilibrium, that's what we're talking about. Weight must equal upthrust. That's one mark. Yes? And upthrust is equal to the weight of fluid displaced. That's another way of making sure you get uh, this understood. Yeah? So upthrust is the weight of fluid displaced. So obviously, um, the volume displaced in seawater, that green bit underneath the surface, that volume is going to be less than the volume of this cylinder because this is less dense, the water is less dense, and the seawater is more dense. So volume times density, 
will be equal to the mass, yeah? And obviously, if the weight of the fluid displaces equal to the weight of the object, then also will the masses will also be equal, okay? All right, so the upthrust will be the same in both fluids, yeah, won't it? Because it's equal to the weight. So if it's equal to the weight in both cases, when it's floating, then the upthrust will be the same uh, in, in terms of Newtons. Uh, but a smaller volume of seawater will be needed because it has a greater density than pure water. So don't miss out things like than pure water to show them that you're finishing your thought. You're not leaving it hanging. And that's how you get three marks if you make all those points. Okay. Next question is now calculation. Calculate the change in the vertical position of the hydrometer. Okay. So now you've got to do the maths. The change in the position. So when it goes from the uh, water, uh, pure water to the seawater, what will the change in the, the amount that it um, sinks into the liquid be? Okay. So when you move it from one to the other. So they're giving you some uh, basic information here that you've got to use, like the weight of the hydrometer. Yeah. They're giving you a density of each type of water and they're giving you the um, diameter of the hydrometer. So don't forget, you've got to change centimeters into meters to make sure that you're using consistent units because everything else is in kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, so here's my thinking. Weight of fluid is weight of hydrometer. Yes, that also means that the mass, because both weight is mg, so the, the mass of the fluid displaced will be equal to the mass of the hydrometer because the gravities cancel. And that just saves you uh, a bit of time. So, what we do we know the mass of the hydrometer? No, but we can work it out because we know weight equals mass times um, gravity. So when you put the numbers in to work out mass, you can see that it's 0 0.033 kilograms. So now we're gonna compare masses um, at the end. So what's the volume of the um, Pure water. So it's the mass of fluid displaced, yes, because it's going to be equal to the, to the mass of the um, hydrometer, divided by the density of the pure water, which has been given to you in the table above as 997. And we'll put that in the volume uh, of pure water will be 3.31 times 10 to the minus. Uh, five meters cubed in a volume will be the length that it or the height that it uh, kind of sinks into the water. I call it L1. I should have maybe called it H1, but uh, I think the, the mark scheme uses L1. So I would have put H1 if it was me times pi x squared. Yeah, actually, it's not pi x squared, it should be x over 2. Yes, because that's the diameter. So x is the diameter, you've got to change it to pi x squared over 4 because the diameter squared will be, we want pi r squared. So that's why I've put a 4 here, yes. Then you can do d squared. Pi d squared over 4 is the same as pi r squared. You will then get 1.19 times 10 to the minus 4. So initially, I made the mistake of... Um, saying that it's x squared where it should be over 4 divided by 4. Yeah, so easy to make a mistake. Depth, detail, clarity. I missed a bit of detail. And you can see when I initially did it, I wasn't uh, focused enough. So again, you've got to do it. Um, uh, once, you know the, once you know the area, yeah, divided by four, of course, don't forget that. Once you know the area, you can then work out the length uh, for each part. So I've used this divided by the area, yeah? So length times area is volume. So now if I divide the volume, yeah, 
which is from here. If I divide the volume, which is that, by the area, which is this, then I will get how deeply it sinks into the a pure water. And then I do it again using the volume in uh, the seawater. And I'll get 0 0.2710. And here I get 0.2786. And if you take one away from the other, you can work out the difference in how much they sink. And it's 7.6 millimeters, or which is approximately eight millimeters, okay? To one significant figure. Okay, so that's quite a mathematical uh, problem um, based on the materials topic of fluids. And that takes us through to another question. I won't be able to do all of the questions today because I don't have a scanner with me and I haven't scanned all of the answers yet and I won't have access to um, a scanner till tomorrow when I go back to work. Okay, well, I hope you found that useful and sorry about nagging you, but YouTube works. The currency of YouTube is liking, sharing, subscribing. There's no way around it. That's the only way the channels will be able to keep going. Um, and so if you find a channel useful, you've got to show your appreciation for the amount of work that goes into making each of these videos using the currency of YouTube. Okay, so please, if you haven't liked the previous videos, go back and like them all. Share them with any friends who are doing it and subscribe so you know when the next video is going to be. So I don't know whether I'll be able to do one more question today or whether I think there's questions 17, 18, 19 left to do. Um, they may be done tomorrow. Okay, well, uh, hopefully see you in the next video if you subscribed. Bye for now.